Okay, now uh, let's move to the M5 forecasting. So it's uh, to estimate the unit sales of Walmart goods. And it's uh, like one year ago. I think everyone is familiar with Walmart, so don't, I don't need to <laughs> introduce that a lot. Uh, and then the data they have is uh, first, so they have multiple uh, CSVs. So the first CSV is about the dates the products are sold. And so the, uh, the week, whether it's the weekday, uh, and also the idea of the day starting from Saturday, the month, the year, and whether there is a date includes an event, and what's the name and type of the event. And many the the stores are in CA Texas or WI, so they, so this is a binary variable indicating um, whether the stores of this uh, allow snap purchases on the examine date. Yeah, I need to check what's a snap purchase. Uh, and then they have provide the prices. I think this is some additional uh, and also different from the earlier competitions. So they also provide the pricing information of the products. So we have the store item, we have the week, and we have the sale price. So the price of the product for the given week for store. Uh, and of course the price is, uh, is average across seven days per week. And then in the training data, we, we mainly have the sales, right? So we have the how many unit sales per product and store. So we have the item ID, department ID, uh, the product categories and the, the, the store IDs, and also the, the sales of the, of the item at that store, like from day one to day uh, nearly 2000. Uh, okay, so that's the introduction to the data. So remember we have the date information, we have whether that date has event or uh, or holiday, and then we have the pricing information of that item. And also for the trains, we have the uh, uh, how many unit, uh, units that, that items are sold at that store for this many days. Okay, and then the metric again, it's very interesting. <laughs> uh, it's called a weighted root mean squared scaled error. So I would say it's more like a, uh, normalized error, right? So they have the nominator here. Well, nominator is very easy to understand. So if you are going to forecast H steps or half, right? So you can just, uh, for your YT, and then you just comparing it to the uh, ground truth, to the ground truth, right? And then for the, and then of course divided by how many days is generated. And for the denominator, well, in the beginning, I said, what's this denominator, right? So actually it's a very naive model, just like forecast one step a half. Right? So for example, you directly use uh, the one day ago as your forecast. So that's a very, you can think of as a baseline model. Right? So they basically comparing the arrows with respect to the baseline, like the last day forecast model. So they do the, normalization and then take the square root of that. So that's why it's called a scaled error of that. Yeah, H is the forecasting horizon. Yeah, I think this, uh, again, it's a very interesting metric that I have never used before, but I think it includes, it, it, it can tell you like how much improvement with respect to the one step forecast baseline. Okay, so first let's look at the first place solution. Again, it's a single, it's a single LGBM model. And the interesting part is uh, the objective is 3D. Uh, I haven't used this objective or loss function before. And I specifically look into this 3D uh, objective. It turns out that for the problem, if you have say lots of zeros, uh, lots of zeros, and then you have this kind of distribution, then 3D objective is, uh, is a very good choice for that. Right? So, so you don't need to throw away the zeros because it's going to uh, modeling zeros as well. 
So if you are focusing like the sales of items or if you are focusing the number of claims, for example, for the insurance claims where you have lots of zeros uh, in your distribution, the treaty objective is a good choice. Uh, and again, they divide into groups with similar time series and model it, right? So for different stores, for different store categories, etc., they train a different model. I think it's a very similar idea to the last competition where you have 16 days, they, they train a separate model for each day. While here they train uh, a different model for different stores, for different store categories, et cetera. Yeah, and, and then they select the final model using the mean. Well, mean is very easy to understand. And they also consider the variation of the models. And so they have multiple validation set and they also see like uh, 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 the variance of the performance. Uh, and this is also very interesting. So it's an example of non-recursive and recursive models. So for the, for the uh, recursive one, well, you just train one model, right? And then like from, uh, from uh, like the T minus one, T minus two to T minus N, and you predict uh, T, predict the, I think it should also include, Uh, and then you pre you predict t plus one, and then when you are going to predict t plus two, you are directly include like your previous output is becoming your input into your model. So we call this this is a recursive model. So for the non-recursive, it's kind of more like a direct prediction, right? So you directly predict t plus one, t plus two, while your model output doesn't serve as the input into the model. So. And then, then they, when they uh, validate their model, they find that on some certain time period, recursive do a better job and on certain period, non-recursive one wins. So in the end, they just do an example of them. So that's very interesting discovery <laughs> of what they find. So what features they, they extract, right? Uh, uh, again, uh, for the store item price, they extract like max mean uh, variations. Then they also do the normalized price divided by the price max. And also they count the number of uniques of the price. Right? And they also have for the same price, what's the number of unique items and also the price momentum. So they, they, they extract lots of uh, stats about the prices for that item, uh, given that store and item. And then there's this uh, calendar features where we have the day, week, uh, the year index, weekend, and of course the event and state. Okay. And then of course, I, I just as the previous competition, well, <laughs> well, they also uh, generate lots of tem temporal, temporal information, temporal features, right? They, they, they also use the lag features, the rolling features, Right. The lag features is just directly extract the cells like how many days ago, right? So they first do a 28 day shift. So because I think it's going to forecast for one month. So they first do a, a shift uh, of eight, 28 days back and then they extract like what's the sales so one day ago, two days ago, three days ago, two, 14 days ago. And then the rolling features is a fixed time window of seven, a fixed window of 14, and then they do the rolling mean and uh, STD. And also the rolling with shift. Uh, shift is like you move how many days back and then start the rolling process. Uh, and this is also very interesting. Well, they, they, they do uh, mean encoding features, like because you have so many different uh, like stores categories right and then they just for each of the ids or different groups right? so you define a group by state by store by category by item and then you extract the stats within each groups so they call it the mean encoding features mm -hmm. yeah so i would say this uh, solution well they again generate lots of stats about the prices, uh, about the sales, uh, temporal 
stats, and then they generate lots of uh, like uh, stats uh, features with respect to each groups. And then for the models, it's a single LGBM models. And then they do the example of non-recursive and recursive. Yeah, that's the first place solution. And I really like the idea of the second place. Well, it's aligning top and bottom. Uh, why we need aligning top and bottom? So the bottom is we directly predict at the lowest level. The lowest level is the store and item level. Right, so 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 you can directly predict uh, given a store, given item, but uh, we can also do uh, like aggregate them, aggregate them up. For example, we can aggregate them all together. Well, you have this time series, and also you can aggregate them to the space. Well, you have this like three states, so three this time series. So when we uh, aggregate the low, the bottom level up. Uh, we really want to match the high level uh, time series as well, right? So, so the idea they 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 uh, point out is first they do a bottom level prediction, where they do an LGBM model for each store, and they they haven't tried the lag or only stats, so there's no uh, stats because they think the aligning top and bottom will do the trick there. Yeah. And then they align the, these bottom models to the top levels. The top levels including all, so it's like aggregate all everything together according to the day. And then they also top level including the states according to the store. So they have uh, about ten stores there. Right? So they just aggregate by store and want to align with these ten time series there. So uh, yeah, so they, the, the basic idea is they, they, they predict at lowest level and then align with the top. Uh, and, uh, and then I think they, uh, they use some magic, they modify the, the loss or the objective that is going to be passed into the LGBM model. <clears throat> so they, they basically modify the gradient and the Hessian uh, for the for the that has to be provided for for the customized objective. Well, you need to return the gradient and has it, and it's a it's a, a, a symmetric uh, loss. Uh, for example, if the residual well the predicted value comparing to your true value, so if the residual is smaller than one, uh, means you are kind of uh, uh, overestimate. Right, so the residual is uh, smaller than one, then the, your predict is higher than your true value. And then uh, if it's true, and then it's, uh, it's like directly multiplied by uh, negative two, but if it's underestimate, then it will, um, you will multiply by a magic multiplier. Well, this multiplier, they train it from 0.9 to 1.23. So what it means is uh, if the multiplier is uh, larger than one, you, you, you tend to over overshot, overfit. And if the multiplier is smaller than one, so if it's equal one, then it's symmetric, right? So then it's symmetric. And if it's smaller than one, it will, it will tend to under underfit. So that's how they, uh, they want to kind of adjust the low level prediction with that. Same, the magic multiplier applies to the, the Hessian uh, over here. Right. So they basically, as they mentioned, they build a set of bottom level models with the different multipliers. Uh, that is basically uh, define your, their objective. And then they find the optimal setting of that uh, is somewhat, somewhere around 0.93 to 0.95. So they build an example of this set of uh, values. And actually this, this loss function is not come up by them. Actually it's a very hard discussion in the forum. So they, everybody's saying uh, this can, can help with the performance and then they pick this uh, customized objective and then they tune the multiplier so that they can get aligned with the top, top levels uh, forecast. So for the top levels, 
uh, they use a different model to predict because at the lowest level, it's quite sparse, right? So LGBM models uh, fit over there. But over here uh, at high level, you can get more data points and then you can directly model a time series at high level, right? Uh, so they use the MBITS model, so you can check it out. Uh, I think it's a very uh, popular neural network model uh, for the for time series. And you can directly, you can train uh, very easily uh, an this model with this package. Uh, it's a probabilistic time series modeling. So it can give you the, the, the forecast into future along with the uncertainty around that. Yeah, feel free to check it out, the, this package. So they use the NBIS model to forecast at the high level. And then with that multiplier tricks, they want to align their uh, low level, the store uh, item level prediction with the high level. So this is what they show as the uh, top, as the level one, right? So you aggregate everything together uh, by the date over here. So you can see the N bits. So this is the N bits, the high level prediction. And then this is their low level prediction. And then they aggregate the map. So they match with each other fairly well, I would say. Um, yeah, so they, so this is at one level. And again, at level two, level three, you will have, could have a different, uh, could have a different multiplier. So that's why in the end, they, they, they build an example with a different multiplier because for different levels, it could be that the multiplier, multiplier is, uh, is different, right? So they kind of uh, do, in the end, they do an example of them uh, to kind of compromise of like, different uh, high level information. Yeah, so that's my, uh, and, and for this competition, they also have, uh, I think published many other uh, winning solution solutions. Uh, like I think third place, fifth place is over there uh, because they have lots of overlap and I really like the different ideas. So I feel like the second place is uh, very, uh, you know, inspiring ideas of how we want to adjust the low level prediction to match with the top. So it's, uh, I think it's a fair, fair idea. And then, uh, and I'm glad to see that it can get uh, very uh, good results uh, without too much feature engineering, I would say. <laughs> <laughs>